Hello everybody, this is David, and welcome back to the 7 Step Processor Series. This is part 3 of the series, and it will be split into two different parts. Part 3A will cover clocks, and part 3B will cover the stepper. Now, this is what the book has for clocks, and I want you to pay attention to this red box over here right quick. The only clocks that we use in the system are this top clock, which is the stepper clock, clock E for enables and clock S for sets. There's no clock D. Even though over here he's got this clock and then like a quarter of a step away, this clock goes high and then he's using logic gates over here. So you can derive clock this clock and clock D and do it this way or I chose to just forget about clock D, use a higher frequency clock and create a 2-bit counter that will continue to count from 0 to 3 and then during the values we can just tell logic like we can tell the stepper clock that when the value of the counter is 0 and 1 we want you high otherwise you're gonna be low and you can see and this is a 50% duty cycle right here you can see clock E has a 75% duty cycle it's on 75% of the time off 25% clock S is exactly the opposite on for 25 and then off for the 75 of this um, stepper clock cycle but anyway we can just I'll show you in the code we're gonna use logic and how we make these signals and it's time to do that all right here's the clock gen module um, I have the sys clock where's my pointer? there it is sys clock up here is an input and we're just getting the stepper clock, clock E, and clock S coming out. Here's that register that is two bits. We'll start it off at zero, and then at every pause edge of the system clock, we will increment this clock reg, and it'll just continue counting zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. And down here is the logic where we create those three clock signals we need. For this clock, when the clock reg is um, value is zero, and when it is one, we will make it one, otherwise it's zero. And for clock E, we just need to turn it off when the value is 3. So when the value is 3, we want it off, otherwise we want it on. And for the 25% duty cycle clock, it's only on during one part of the counter, which is when the counter value is 1. We want it on, otherwise we want it off. Here's the test bench for that module. We simply just need to create a system clock that drives that module. Right, it's just one oops, excuse me it is one input of a sys clock and so we're just driving that with this plug that in there and then the rest of the signals will view out we just need to create a clock uh, every one tick we will knot it and then um, we'll start it off at zero go for a little ways and finish now it's time to show you the simulation all right, here's GTK Wave. I ran the simulation. I will assume by now that you know how to run your commands from the command line. And um, here, so here's the waveform and set this up like it is, right? I'm just leaving this at binary. And uh, you can see our clock reg value, zero, one, two, three, and it just keeps continuing. And you can see that our stepper clock is on during zero and one and off during two and three. Our clock E has that 75% duty cycle. It's only off during the value of clock reg is three. And then our clock S is only on during uh, when clock reg is one. So now we've um, basically emulated those three clock signals like we want. On to part 3B. All right, as previously mentioned in part 3B, we will cover the stepper. And this is essentially the stepper. It's this symbol right here. We have seven signals coming out, the clock going in, uh, and a reset. And I'll tell you something about the reset. Later on in the book, you find out that step seven just runs right back into the stepper and creates the reset itself. And essentially, over here on the right, um, during, shoot, during every clock, um, cycle right a step a different step is on essentially you can see that over here so and then this is what it breaks down to inside of it basically 
Um, and you can code it by logic gates. Each one of these M's is that single mem bit that we started with. Remember that single memory bit? Um, and you can build it like this, or you can build it in the way that I'm going to do it, and I'll show you here right now. Okay, so instead of using logic gates, um, simply the, uh, the stepper has a clock, right? Clock input, and it has seven steps. But like I said, step seven is a reset. So I'm only gonna use, there's only six, and it wraps around back into itself. So I'm only gonna have six bits for the step. Uh, but there are going to be seven steps, just on the seventh step, it's pretty much gonna be like a no operation and go right back. Um, yeah, we'll get more into about that when I get into the control unit, but just for the stepper, here's the parameters for each one. It's essentially a state machine is what I'm gonna use here. Instead of all that logic, I can just use a state machine. So I have a, a state reg and then that's next state, always at the pause edge clock, um, next or state becomes next state. And then anytime we get a, a, a change in signals, input signals, which will be the clock, we're gonna check the state. And um, so for in state one, we'll go to state two, for in state two, we'll go to state three and so on and so on. But each state will essentially just turn one bit of that register on, one bit of the step register that is the output. And it's basically a one hot, right? Like one hot, what they call one hot signal, one signal's on. So this one, this one's on here and then the next one comes on and the next one comes on and the next one comes on the next one and the next one and then during step seven there's no step seven we're just gonna do like a no op for now and uh, come back to it later and so here's the test bench for it we just need a, a clock to drive the single input that is going into the stepper uh, and then a wire of six bits for the output here's where we're instantiating the device under test Here's where we're creating the clock the Icarus Verilog stuff we need here, initializing the clock, we'll run it for a little bit and finish. All right, after running the simulation and getting GTK Wave and setting it up, you can see I'll, I'll keep the state and the next state up here, although, you know, we don't really need those, it's just more stuff we don't need to see, but you can see in the state, state zero, we've got the one hot going on, we only have one one and then every um, clock edge we change to the next state and then the next step signal goes high in this case we have the second one and then the third one fourth one step five step six and then step seven we don't have anything coming out it's just kind of like a step a reset step and then right back to step one so you can see the stepper is working I'm going to take you back and show you a preview of what we got coming up next. So as I said before, things will get real interesting when we get to the control unit. And here it is. And you notice, you, you probably, you may have been like, where'd the clock and the stepper come from, right? That nothing was shown in this uh, microprocessor. Well, it's all part of the control unit. And this is going to be a long video and a lot of stuff to do. So I broke out just the clock and the stepper to do separately. And then, um, well, you can see what's going on here in the control unit. It's gonna get, it's gonna get pretty hairy next video. So hope you tune in for that one and I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching.